This is Poe. He is a Papillon mix and he is in a constant state. He says, let me get on your shoulder. I'm going to jump out of the bathtub and get on your shoulder. He is not a huge fan of the bath and I lovingly nicknamed him Poe the parrot because he seriously just wants to be on your shoulder. It's super cute. I always like to test the water before I put it on their body just to make sure it's the right temperature. Shish. Uh, no thank you. Um, I will not be getting a bath today. Excuse me, is is that even... That is not your shoulder and I, I will just get away from this water and I don't care what I have to do. A lot of people ask why I put a towel down while I groom some of my dogs. The grates at where I work have these tiny little holes in them and sometimes dogs with little toe pads, will it'll get stuck in those little holes and it's so scary. We have to get like conditioner and like try and get it. He says, I do not like dish bath and I'm just going to keep on moving and just, I'm just not going to make dish very easy for you at all. I like to keep my hand on the chest and it makes it hard because washing with one hand is kind of difficult. I'm explaining to my coworker that he's in a constant upward motion. Like he just want, like I'm holding my hand there firmly and he's just in that, that energy. Like if I let go, he's like, boing, like he just wants to go. So I have to use one hand to wash him, but keeping my hand on his chest helps to keep him a little more comfortable. And in one spot, he says, I'm going to get on your shoulder whether you like it or not. The shampoo I'm using is a hypoallergenic tearless shampoo. And even though it's tearless, you don't want to squirt the shampoo directly into their eyes. So I like to use a lot of the residual shampoo to wash the face. It just makes it so there's not like a lot of shampoo on the face. Plus, he's not a huge fan of being rinsed. So it makes it a lot easier and the rinse time a lot shorter. Once I got him all scrubbed up and covered in shampoo, it's time to rinse his favorite part. He says, oh no, not dish again. I don't like it. Get the water off of me because it's just not something that I approve of. And can you just let me get on your shoulder? Just just let me get on your shoulder for a little bit. And I'm like, Poe, come on. So he's just a little... He's a little lover and he's not the easiest. I would say on a scale of one to 10, he's probably like an eight to, to bathe. And he says, I'm just gonna put my foot right here and just do what you gotta do and let's get this over with. Mom did warn me when I first met him that he does not like having a bath and he really doesn't. And it's more like, I wouldn't say he's bad. It's just, it gets kind of frustrating. And this is where, a lot of your patience really comes into play and some groomers have kind of a short fuse and him moving around like that and trying to get out of the bathtub and everything constantly it just you know really just plucks their I don't know, plucks their fuse I don't know that's a weird I made that up I don't know what's going on so now he's dry and I don't remember if he liked the blow dryer or not but I think that I let him air dry for the most part because I wasn't going to try and get him to blow dry if he wasn't even liking the bath. I Usually if they don't like the bath, they're not a huge fan of the blow dryer. And I usually don't like to force it on him. I would call his coat a combination coat. He has those furnishings on his back end. I like to call them his feathers. And then he's pretty thick around his neck and behind his ears. So I like to check and see where there are any thick spots with my comb. Usually the tail is kind of a neglected area at home. Um, I use the comb to get it nice and smooth. He says, that feels kind of nice. This is better than the bathing. I think that I prefer being combed rather than being bathed. Figuring out the best comb or brush or tool to use on your dog is kind of a trial and error thing. And I'm lucky to be in a salon where I have every single tool at my disposal so I can kind of try things, see what works. Sometimes this works on a certain coat and sometimes this works better on a different kind of coat. It's just all trial and error, blah, trial and error. <laughs> but I find that most of my recommendations end up being a metal comb and a slicker brush. If your dog has a smooth coat, then, you know, my go-to, the Zoom Groom. But if you're ever in doubt, a comb and a slicker brush is, is pretty much a safe bet. Even just a comb is pretty. She says, I'm getting on your shoulder now. Is it, time? Is it shoulder time now? Because I, I think I just climb you. 
getting started in grooming, I usually will not recommend ha people who want to get started to go to a grooming school only because, and my groomer friends out there, you'll get this, there is nothing like a Saturday at a grooming salon <laughs> to teach you time management and the stress of, you know, having your dogs done on time. It's a, a Saturday in a grooming salon. You can't, you can't teach that. Like you just have to be in it to learn it. And I always recommend people who want to start grooming to start as a bather somewhere. I love recommending Petco and PetSmart's training program just because they are so safe. They teach you the way things need to be done. And then you learn from your coworkers. And sometimes you're lucky and you get like some veteran groomers who know some cool tricks and stuff like that. But um, it's just it's not something that you can just, there's more to it than just learning how to groom. It's, it's the customer service. It's answering phone calls. It's making sure that your dogs are not there for X amount of hours. And every salon is different. There are a lot of private salons who end up like you have a drop off time in the morning and then, you know, you just come pick your dog up at five. Like there's different ways to do it, but like with the corporate salons, we have, blocking systems where we have a certain amount of dogs coming in in the first half of our shift and then some more dogs coming in the latter half of our shift. But that even takes a lot of getting used to figuring out how many haircuts are you comfortable doing? How many haircuts are you comfortable doing when you only have three hours left in your shift? It's just, he says, I don't like having my nails done. I'm just going to try to get away from you. I'm not even going to try and get on your shoulder, but okay, well, this is kind of comfortable. I'm reminded of this Saturday that I was working and, oh, it was when I, I think I had been grooming for maybe two or three years. So I was still a baby groomer. I still, you know, was shaving double coated dogs and I had this big double coated dog come in that wanted, um, he wanted a half inch all over. Well, the thing when you do guard combs, you have to get every single bit of undercoat out before you even attempt to try to get a guard comb through that coat. It is so time consuming and it's so much easier just to be able to just do a number seven or do like a real, he says, who is that? Do you have a shoulder for me? Oh, I'm getting distracted. I started watching the video. He says, please, please, can, can you, the friend in here put me, look, I sit and be nice and cute if you just pick me up and put me on your shoulder, please. So where was I? Uh, number seven or shaving that dog is going to take way less time because I don't have to get the undercoat out. I just shave right through it. So this person didn't want it shaved. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do a guard comb. And I spent at least an hour brushing this dog out. Doing The, the dog ended up taking me like five hours to groom. Let's put it this way. So I go and put the dog away, call on the owner. And the owner comes to pick up. And he says, oh, that's too long. I want it short. I want it shorter. And I'm like, well, shorter will be, you know, a shave. You said you didn't want it shaved. So I said, okay, all right, you got it. It'll be another 45 minutes or so. And I took the dog into the back area. And I remember just leaning against the kennels, sliding down. I have the dog on the leash and just collapsing and just bawling my eyes out because I was so tired. I was so stressed. I spent so much time doing this haircut on this dog and I was just like, I can't, all that work and I'm, I'm gonna have to just shave it anyway. I could have just done that in an hour. Like, oh, I just, I remember feeling so defeated and discouraged and I just wanted to just leave. I just didn't wanna do it. You can't teach that in a grooming school. I, I mean, I'm sure that there are wonderful techniques and wonderful ways and different styles and things that you can learn. I think grooming schools and courses and seminars and things like that are a great addition to your education, but starting out, you just really got to get in it and you just got to learn it. When I was manager at the salon at PetSmart, I was part of the hiring process. I got to do interviews and I would always want to go for the underdog. Like, I always want to give that person a chance who maybe 
they wouldn't have a chance somewhere else because people were judgy or people were, you know, I just, I always wanted to give them a chance. And so we had this person come in for an interview and they had said that they had experience. They worked at a private shop and they knew how to do nails. I'm like, yes, I don't have to train somebody to do nails. This is great. This is so perfect. Yes, come, let's, let's hire her. Like, let's just, let's do it. This was a huge learning, learning, what? Learning some, uh, this was, this was a learning moment for me. <laughs> we hired this person and I'm just completely naive and people lie. And when people lie about, don't lie about what you can do. You're, you're working with living things. You can't, you, if you're thinking about buffing up your, your knowledge on anything that has to do with humans or dogs or animals, period, don't buff up your, no. So one day this person is bathing a Pomeranian and I'm up in the front doing, doing my thing. And the person goes, Melissa, how do I know if I cut a nail too short? And I said, well, it'll bleed. And you know, the quick stop is right there. Da, 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 whatever. She goes, can you, can you tell me if I cut this too short? I pick my dog up off the table and walk over to her station and look at the dog's toe. <clears throat> she cut off the entire toenail to the nubby, like no toenail left. She cut it to the toe. And I said, person, you cut the entire toenail off. Like, yes, that's, that's too short. It's, that's too short. Like, why? How? Uh. So, yeah, I, I'm not a huge underdog fan. I, I always love giving people the benefit of the doubt. Like, when I meet you, I have complete trust in you. And that is one of my character flaws because I know not everybody can be trusted. I know not everybody has good within them all the time. And I would sometimes get... I would oftentimes get taken advantage of just because of my, my just trustiness. Trustiness? Did I make up a word? I don't know. Anyway, I just, I love giving people that trust because I, I don't know. I just, now I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's get back to Poe. Basically what I've learned about Poe is that he really doesn't mind anything except for the bath. He's really just, just a good boy. He's just, is it time now? Is it time? Is it shoulder time? Hey, shoulder time now? Can I, what's, what, 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 oh, what was that? What did you just put on? Okay, shoulder time. Shoulder time, please. Um, excuse me. Oof, that made me sneeze a little. Um, let's, okay. Can we get on the shoulder now? Is it time? Was it? Where are you going? What are you doing? Is it time for my shoulder? Is it, um... Oh, now what? I thought we were done. No, no, no. Don't. Mm. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, I forgot I have two of these things. Whatever you're doing here, I'd, I'd prefer that we just didn't do it. Can we just, can we just be done now? And I said, no, I should just. Uh. Okay. Is it shoulder time now? Is it time? Did I talk for two minutes? Two minutes about shoulder time. What are you doing? What are you doing with those? You're going to... Mm, I thought we were going to have shoulder time. Here, I'm just checking to see if I missed anything. Oh, look, see, I got a little snag there. I always like to double check with my comb after I'm done with everything. Just because you never know if you're going to miss something. And there's always more. You, anyone who owns a dog that... I said boop. <laughs> anyone who owns a dog knows that they're just shed machines. And it's just constant. And I said, okay, it's shoulder time now. Poe, you want to come now? He says, nah, nah, I don't think so. I think you denied me for too long. I don't want to get on your shoulder. And I was like, come on, dude. I think I was trying to show uh, one of my coworkers. Oh, look, he want. I think he wants my coworker's shoulder, really, because look at him. He says, your shoulder looks very nice. And you didn't deny me your shoulder the entire time. So can, can I get on your shoulder? And the, yep. <laughs> He totally wanted to go on her shoulder. And I said, okay, well, my shoulder's not good enough for you now. He says, it's 
but I think I'm showing him my shoulder. Nope, he wasn't he wasn't down for my shoulder. I think he was upset that I didn't give him my shoulder that whole time. So, okay, thanks for watching. And uh, Poe is very, he says, oops, there's a piece of hair that flew off of me. He says, I'm not going to look at you. You clean my ears. Welcome to the end of my video, which my end screen doesn't work very well with my uh, vertical filming. <laughs> Watch another one. I don't know if I can put the little video icons on here, but I love you guys. Thank you for making this so fun.